Jens, thanks very much for joining us from Frankfurt. What are you seeing in some in terms of some of these challenges around particularly ESG? Well, ESG is a, is a movement which is uh, very much driven right now within um, the European community. But for us um, as a fund who is acting on a global scale, it's quite important to also understand what's happening across the world. Um, so if we come up with an idea in a lovely Wiesbad, we also have to think about how we can implement it um, in Australia or in the US as, as well. And this is, um, to be honest, sometimes quite a challenge um, because um, there's a different understanding how you take care of data and, um, of course, uh, from a tax and legal perspective as well. The only way is really trying to identify uh, one direction, how you interpret ESG for yourself and how you can implement it into the fund. Looking then towards the sort of um, European side of things, Yen, um, what are you seeing particularly there in terms of the challenges for implementation, um, you know, particularly with your fund and, and any other general challenges that you're seeing in, in the market at the moment? Well, luckily, we started with some, let's say, operational tasks um, like two years ago. So just to give you an idea um, how we can digitalize just the metering, the smart metering within our buildings. Um, today, we're looking basically to a new challenge, uh, which is the EU taxonomy. Uh, it's quite fresh. Um, it just came into the market last year. And there are, let's say, still some open questions that need to be answered. Um, we're trying actually to find the right answers today. Um, but the challenges, of course, are how you can implement it in the future and how you can make it operational. One thing is basically to be on the product um, side and to define what you want to achieve, but then you have to think about it, how you can you know, bring it together in the asset management, how you bring it together in the property management, facility management, et cetera, et cetera. So you really have to, to think about the full chain of services which, which um, sits behind. How do you see strategies, particularly for ESG, um, developing? We are at the beginning, you know, of um, ESG strategies. Um, some people say um, it's a wave. Others say it's a tsunami. Um, likely it's something in between. From my perspective, it really depends, you know, um, what you want to achieve with your product. Um, there will be products out there which can um, live um, fantastic with it, fantastically without being an ESG-conformed product. There will be others which likely go beyond and are going to be an impact product. Um, but for, let's say, the wider majority, from my perspective, ESG becoming very relevant. And it's uh, not a, a grayish question. Uh, one day you will be asked, um, are your ESG compliant? And the question will just simply be, yes, I am, or no, I'm not. So if you think about strategy, I think now's the time to really you know, make up your mind and, and take a tough decision, likely, uh, whether you want to be it or you don't want to be it. How are you beginning to build in this these these ESG strategies um, into your current portfolio, but also the the assets that you're buying? So we started a couple of years ago already, um, trying to get more data out of our assets. I think the starting point is always um, to get a better view on your energy consumption, which automatically gives you a picture of uh, your CO2 footprint. If you think about how you can manage it um, into the future. Um, you have you know, to identify kind of a path where what you want to achieve, um, which is in balance with your existing portfolio and your future acquisitions. Within Comerz Real, we've just came up with a tool that we designed for ourselves um, to better understand what we need to achieve if we look into a specific asset so that it complies with what we want to achieve. And um, that's one part of the solution um, that we take care of or that we do. Um, for other companies, it might be completely different, but um, for us, it's quite handy and we already have it operational. In terms of the types of assets that you're selecting now going forward, Jens, are you, uh, are you looking to only bring in assets that, that will be compliant by uh, 2050, for example? Well, 2050, um, it's along the pathway and um, depends, um, let's say, on the strategy on each specific asset. We have assets on a portfolio which uh, we have for ages, like 20, 25, 30 years, which are really strategic. Um, there are other assets in the portfolio which we likely have only two years, five or ten. So we call it the trading portfolio uh, within the big portfolio. And I think um, if uh, you have to match, you know, um, your acquisition with your final, let's say, target, uh, what you want to achieve. But 2050 is closer than we believe. And to fulfill um, the, let's say, the regulations in 2050, you, you have to start today yeah, because you have to balance all your portfolio and um, therefore you need to bring a much better 
buildings today, you know, to, to bring the rest of the portfolio into the pathway of achieving the numbers in 2015. Great. Really interesting to catch up. And thanks for sharing that with us, Jens. Thank you. Thank you very much, Richard.